Okay, so the last, last section in Unit 9 is 9.8, which is volume and area related to scale factor. So this has nothing to do with the circle theorems in Unit 9, um, but we're going to investigate how scale factor relates to area and volume and side lengths of different two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes. Okay, so we talked about scale factor back in Unit 7 when we were talking about triangles and similar polygons. And so it's basically like a dilation, okay? So the angles will stay the same, but there's a ratio of side lengths, okay? And that's called the scale factor. So let's say that we have two polygons and two 3D figures, and the ratio is A to B, like two to three or four to five, um, a reduced scale factor, okay? So we're gonna call that the ratio, and we're gonna say that that's also known as the scale factor. What we want to do is we want to investigate how does that relate to the area and volume without necessarily calculating those measurements because we might, we might not have enough information. Okay, And so we could do a proof of this by showing different figures. If we had a cylinder and then a larger cylinder and let's say um, the radius of this cylinder is 2 with a height of 5 and the ratio of this cylinder might be three with a height of, um, I'm sorry, let's make this eight, sorry, um, a height of 20 because our scale factor needs to be four in all of those lengths, okay? And so we might be able to use the volume or surface area of the cylinder, find each, calculate and compare it. Okay, but what we want to do is avoid all of that behind the scenes work. So it's a pretty simple concept. If you have the perimeters, you're going to be adding up all of the sides. And because we're adding, um, if the ratio of the scale factors is A to B, and it doesn't matter what the shape is, then the ratio of the perimeters is also going to be A to B because we're just adding up the sides. Okay. So the ratio of the areas though, if I would calculate the surface area or if this was a flat shape, like just a circle, then area is a squared unit and that's actually the ratio of the sides. So we're gonna do A squared over B squared. We're gonna square both sides, okay? Same thing with the surface areas for a 3D shape. Volume is only relevant to a three-dimensional shape, and volume, the unit is, I'll put this here, unit squared, unit squared, this is just unit, unit. Volume, when you calculated that back in your previous math courses, it was always a cubic label. And so that's actually how you find the ratio of the volumes. You take the original scale factor and you cube both values. So A cubed over B cubed. And so we won't necessarily be able to set up some proportions, but we can use these scale factors to find missing measurements. It really just depends on how it's asked. And there's lots of different ways that this is applied. So let's look at example one. It says, let's say we have these two cubes, uh, rectangular prisms, and we've got A and B, and they tell you that the ratio of the sides is two to three. Well, we can kind of look at that. If I look at the bottom length, if I look at the height, 8 to 12 can also be reduced to 2 to 3 and this length, okay? So if they didn't tell us that the ratio, then we would find that length ourselves. So the side lengths, it doesn't matter which side length you pick, they're all going to be in the same ratio as we just demonstrated above. So you can write this as a fraction or you can write it as a colon. It doesn't matter. They're both equivalent. So I'm, I just like the colon. So I'm going to write 2 to three. And typically they'll let you know if it's like left to right or right to left, larger to smaller, smaller to larger. So by default, it's always left to right, just so you know. Okay. The ratio of the surface areas. So what I want to do is if I take the side lengths and since I want an area, I'm going to square those numbers. So I get two squared to three squared. Now you do want to actually calculate that value. So 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 
oops, I wrote it cubed there. Uh, three squared, three times three is nine. And so the ratio of the surface areas would be four times nine. And so what that means is it's gonna take, compared to the side length, it's gonna take that much more to, let's say we were covering this in wrapping paper. All right, and that's how surface area would be applied. Think of it's the area of all the sides of the outside added up together. Um, and so that's like wrapping paper. If you were painting a room, um, that's how that would be relevant, okay? Volume is how much it would hold. So if we take two cubed and three cubed, well, two times two times two is eight and three times two times three is 27. And so that's how it compares. So um, if I wanna really understand how large, how much larger this is, I could divide both numbers by eight. So just to kind of compare. And you don't really do this, um, but I like to have students understand what they're doing. If I divide 27 divided by eight, this would be like one, to 3.375. So what that means is the second cube holds 3.37 times five times as much. So it's it's almost it's more than three times larger than the original cube. Same thing with the surface area. If I really wanted to compare how much more wrapping paper I would use, I need to get this down to a unit on a one on the left. So if I divide both by four, nine divided by four is 2.25. So that means it's going to take me two and a quarter more times of wrapping paper to wrap this box than that box, okay? So that's what you're really finding. All right, let's try something different using these concepts, though. So on example two, we're given these polygons, and they tell us that they're mathematically similar because they're not going to give us all of the values, so we wouldn't be able to determine that ourselves. So it says, find the area of shape A. So they tell us if we know the scale factor of the sides. So I'm going to put side scale factor. I'm just going to do left to right. So I've got 7 to 28, which reduces to be divide by 7, divide by 7, I get 1 to 4. Okay, so that means that all of these side lengths, and we don't know them, are going to be four times as large as whatever our left side lengths are. Now, our area, this is where it's different. We know our area is squared, okay? And so our area scale factor, just stay with me. We have to do this problem a little bit differently because we don't know the formula for the area. We don't have enough information. So if I squared both of these values, our scale factor of the sides, I would get 1 to 16. So what that means is that the area of this second polygon is 16 times larger than the area of the first polygon A. Does that make sense? So if I know the area of the second figure, and I know it's 16 times larger, since we're multiplying, we're going to divide. So I would take that 320, and I'm going to divide by the scale factor of the area. So 320 divided by 16 is 20, and so that means that that's the area of the first shape, 20 centimeters squared. Does that make sense? Now, once you um, apply the scale factor for area is squared, you could set up a proportion. I could have 1 over 16 is equal to x over 320, and then we could solve it using a proportion. But you, the difference is, is I can't just use the original scale factor for my proportion. I have to use the scale factor for the area in the proportion. All right, let's try a third example. So we've got these pyramids since they go to a point, and I definitely don't have enough information to calculate the volume, but they tell you that the volume of shape A is 600 cubic centimeters. So they want you to find the volume of shape B. So first we need to find the scale factor of the lengths. So I'm gonna put side scale factor. And you can do this in any order. I just always go left or right. So I've got 11 to 22. Both of those divide by 11. 
So I get 1 to 2. So I know the lengths are going to be twice as large in B than A. So this is A to B. Now, since we're talking about volume, volume is cubed, so I want my volume ratio. So I get 1 cubed to 2 cubed. And you always want to reduce those scale factors. So 1 cubed is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So that means that the volume in my second B pyramid is going to be 8 times larger than the volume of the first pyramid, A. Okay? So, well, if I know the volume, and I know volume B is 8 times larger, then yes, you really can just multiply those by 8. So I get 4,800. Um, cubic centimeters. Okay, once again, if you want to set up a proportion, you're welcome to. I knew this was 600, and I knew this was x, and so we could solve that. All right, so apply that area is squared, side lengths is the original value, or 1, and then volume is cubed, okay, when you're trying to solve for information.